Okay, today's video is mostly about these right here. I have the new Hourglass Holiday Palettes. I cannot believe this. These actually were sent to me in PR. I was so shocked to receive that package because if I'm being honest, I don't know that I would have picked these up on my own, but I'm very excited to try them out today and let you know my thoughts. I'll let you know if I think these are worth the $90 price point. We also have new Charlotte Tilbury, new Shadow Sticks from Fenty, new Jones Road, Sigma. So lots of fun, exciting new products to test out. Let's jump straight in. I never started to get ready with me with like literally nothing on my face, but I was really excited to test this out. This is the new moisturizer from Charlotte Tilbury. This is called Charlotte's Magic Water Cream. So we're going to apply this and I already have some thoughts even before even applying this because this moisturizer costs, wait for it, $100. So this is the full size. It's 1.7 ounces. I did not spend $100 on this. And I'm going to be honest with you. I highly doubt I'm going to love this to the point that I will think it is worth $100. But I will let you know. I will let you know. So the full size, like I said, is $100. Or you can buy a mini for $30. And it also offers a refill, which is just $90. But this is the newest product in this. I can hear... I don't know if it's my cat, Tilly, or my roommate's cat. Someone's getting into something. But this is the newest product in the Charlotte Tilbury skincare line. And I am excited to announce that this does not have fragrance in it, even though most of their skincare products do. So I was actually at the launch event for this product. I was not invited to the launch event. I was a plus one with my friend, but I was still so, so, so excited to be there. I was like, oh my God, I'm at a Charlotte Tilbury event. But this is the new water cream moisturizer. It's supposed to be similar concept to their very famous magic cream, which I'm sure you've heard about over and over and over again. So some of the key ingredients that they're really highlighting here are niacinamide as well as peptides. I will say right off the bat for being a water cream, I was anticipating the formula to feel a bit more gel-like than it does. If anything, I actually would describe it as creamier and though it feels lightweight enough, I think it's actually more hydrating than I was expecting based on that name. Also, don't judge me. I'm about to go straight in with foundation, no sunscreen. I know it is like, pitch black today, gloomy, I'm not going outside. Normally I still wear sunscreen inside, but today I just wanna see how this applies, okay? So we're gonna take the Ilia foundation. This is their True Skin Serum foundation, which I just realized mine is cracked. I don't know what happened to that packaging. That's weird. Um, I really do enjoy this foundation. It's one of my favorites. It's weird, I didn't love it in the beginning. It's really grown on me, so I have the shade uh, 1.5 and I think this is actually great timing for me to be testing out this super intensely nourishing uh, moisturizer because my skin is going through it right now. It's something about the seasonal change. My skin just wants to go crazy this time of year and I'm getting very peely around my face. So we will definitely be putting this to the test today. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a pinned comment linked down below if I notice anything particular from any of these products while I'm testing them out. I've been trying to add those on my um, like testing new makeup videos. Obviously with all of these videos, I'm gonna come back to you once I've had an opportunity to thoroughly test everything and I'm gonna give you some like actual thoughts. Keep in mind, these are just my first impressions, but I will go ahead and leave the pinned comment so you can get more info. I will say, on my super dry chin, this is looking nice. Tell me why I picked a white headband to wear when I'm doing my makeup right now. Cause I also have the same type of headband as like gray or black. I was like, no, let me do white while I'm about to test a bunch of new makeup. I feel like I look really glowy right now, to be honest, maybe even more glowy than I normally do with this um, foundation. So I could see this moisturizer being nice for someone with dry skin. That being said, I, just to be so transparent right now, I don't think you need to spend $100 on a moisturizer. I think even if this was like one of the best moisturizers I've ever used, I still would probably not repurchase it. Even when I'm done with it, even though the refill is $10 less, $90 for a moisturizer is just absolutely bananas to me. Especially when I have other favorites that are in the like... $40, $50 range. And even that I think is so steep because there are plenty of great moisturizers at the drugstore. I also can't say that this packaging feels considerably more luxe than my other moisturizers that are about half of this price point. Like, yes, it is glass, but it's actually quite bulky. And I wish 
that for this price point, it should have an airless pump to it. Like I really don't like that for a hundred dollars. I still have to put my finger into the jar. I'm like trying to keep this off the headband. We'll see, we'll see. Probably gonna go straight in the wash after this. Okay, we will go ahead and use the new Kosis, or not Kosis, Tower 28. Oh my gosh, okay. The problem is the brand's Kosis, Tower 28, like there are a few brands at Sephora that in my mind are just like interchangeable. Like I get them mixed up. Kosis and Tower 28 for me, like they're, they're like the same brand in a different font. This is the Tower 28 concealer. I have the shade DTLA. If you want my full thoughts, I did just review this in my latest speed reviews. And I've said that I really do enjoy this concealer upon the initial application, but what I run into is such a significant amount of creasing with this, like more than I get with most concealers. So that alone kind of holds me back, even though I do really love like the initial look of it. Like it just looks so pretty and glowy, but I wish it didn't crease. Before we go in with the hourglass, I am gonna powder a little bit. Even though the palette is all powders, I, I look at them more so as like finishing powders versus actually like setting powder. So I'm gonna just lightly take a little bit of this powder from ColourPop. This is the Pretty Fresh powder. I have the shade Fair 2. I've got my freshly washed brushes. If you missed it, that was the last video that I posted. I did like a big declutter. I decluttered all my lipsticks. I swatched every single one in that video for like, what was it? Like 40 minutes of the video is like just swatching and going through all of my lipstick so i decluttered a bunch of those also did like a little shot my stash in there but then i washed my brushes in that video so i'm like relishing in using this like freshly washed brush right now that is like one of the most satisfying things to use a brush that you have just washed all right there we go now it is time for the hourglass palettes this is the one we've all been waiting for so there are three holiday palettes but there are actually four exterior packaging options so let me walk you through that the three that are available are the pre-made palettes but you also have the option of swapping out the packaging so let's say you really loved the cheetah packaging but you wanted different tones on the inside you do have the option to do that so the most satisfying part ah, i love that i love that okay so this one is the cheetah palette. There is also the snake palette. I love it, I love it. Here we've got the snake. I think this is so pretty. I really like the like teal bluish packaging on this. And then the jellyfish, which I think is going to be um, my shade. So this one is the lightest palette of the three. So there's the jellyfish up close. But like I said, you could opt for these shades and like still change the exterior packaging. So you do have that option. Let me hold them all up next to one another so you can kind of get an idea. Also, these are tin. They do feel quite heavy. I'm like, how do I hold these in my two hands and try to hold up all three? Okay, here we go. We've got snake, jellyfish on top, cheetah on the bottom these each retail for 90 dollars, so they're pretty pricey last year they were 85 so they've gone up five dollars but hourglass is donating five percent to the non-human rights project so i'm gonna start off with the jellyfish palette i have more thoughts on this but i'll describe it while we apply it so i'm going to go ahead and apply this with the brush that is also in the collection but is sold separately so we've got the cute snake packaging this is what the brush looks like and I don't normally love a brush this shape but we'll go ahead and try it this retails for $50 but maybe maybe I'll love it we'll see so I'm gonna go ahead in the jellyfish palette start off with the bronzer shade so I did want to talk about the value here for a bit because that is like the okay first of all we are about to stain this white headband we already know that so I'm just I'm not even gonna hold back I'm just gonna accept it whenever I hear reviews on the hourglass palettes I think the main thing that I hear is that it is a really great value even though the upfront cost is $90 you're getting a lot of product here and so I wanted to kind of break down what that value actually looks like so for reference each of these pans is the equivalent size of the mini versions of the ambient lighting powders. So you could go onto Sephora or Hourglass website right now and buy these pans in this size and the minis cost $28, except the mini bronzers are 30. So the mini blush, highlights, 
powders, those are all 28. Okay, I said I was gonna not care about the headband, but let's push it back, let's try not to. I'm gonna try not to. So I wanted to break down the value of this if we're considering that each of these pans is approximately $28. Now, like I said, the bronzers are 30 and each palette has one bronzer in it. So I calculated out the value based on five $28 pans plus one $30 pan, which brings the actual value of this palette to around $170 if we're calculating off of the price of the minis, which you could already buy. Now, the math is going to look different if you calculate it out, um, like the cost per ounce based on the full size, but... To keep things straightforward, I went based on the minis. And I wanted to include that little math breakdown to say that I think the value is there if you're looking at the palette thinking you're gonna use most of the shades. But that tends to be the thing about a face palette. For myself, I always find there's like one or two pans that I'm not really using. So if you're looking at this thinking, you know, I would maybe only use these three and not those other two, I would say actually buy three individual minis of the shades that you actually want because the cost is about the equivalent of this palette because the minis are 28 to $30. But if you're like, I probably use at least four or more pans out of this, I think the value is there for you. Also keep in mind, some of these shades are limited edition. So the only way to get them is buying the palette. This bronzer is applying really pretty though. So funny enough, I have not used the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder products in years. And when I first tried them, I never, <laughs> I never really understood the hype, but one comment I would always get was, you'll get it as you get older. You're gonna really like them. And I'm like, okay, we'll see. I'm only a few years older than I was then, but we'll see if my thoughts on these have changed. So far, I do think this looks really beautiful and radiant. Let's go ahead now and pop in to this blush. I'm gonna go ahead and use this shade right here with the same brush and just add a bit of that to my cheeks. Oh, Tilly, whenever I film, she can never decide she wants to be in the room or outside of the room. So she will like leave when I start filming and then halfway through filming, I can hear her like banging on the door and she'll kind of meow to me like, okay, I'm ready to come back. So I gotta go let her in. This, I will say, you know me and you know I like matte. So this already, I think maybe that's what's kind of held me back about some of these hourglass powders over the years is that they are this like beautiful radiant glow, but I just tend to prefer something matte. Even though I do think this glow looks more natural on the skin, I've just always loved how smoothing and perfecting a matte powder can be. But I wanna go in now and use a little bit of this powder right here as a finishing powder. Kind of tap that under the eyes. Oh. Wow, that I feel like actually made a huge difference in blurring. Like I said, I have not used an hourglass finishing powder in years, but that looks really pretty. Also gonna take a little bit of this like brighter white just to even add a little bit more brightness to the under eye. For the sake of using everything, I'm gonna go in with the other blush. Keep that a little bit more concentrated here on the cheek. One thing I will say about these powders, I think they give the most uh, similar look to a cream, I would say. Like where you have this luminous glow to it, but they're still a bit smoother because they are powders and because they are baked. Okay, we'll take a little bit of the highlight up here. I actually have not worn highlight. Actually, no, the other day I did wear a highlight. It was like, I remember it because I was like, wow, I haven't worn highlight in probably like a month. But that's really pretty. That is very pretty. Okay, I, I this, for me it's too glowy i know for a lot of people this is like the perfect amount and it looks beautiful but i'm gonna go in on my velour puff with a little bit of this color pop powder again and just tap this area do you see it is literally like a, a blurring filter on your face just taking a little bit of powder on a puff right here and putting it right there for me this is a great combo you get like the glow and like the blurred glow of those powders but then taking a slightly more mattifying powder and like really getting into some of the too shiny spots. Okay, I'm gonna try to quickly touch up my brows a bit. I'm using the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Marker and the Ulta Beauty Ultra Slim Brow Pencil. Oh my gosh, so as a cat mom, I give in, okay? I know that I shouldn't 
and I know I'm like created a monster because I always give in, but Tilly likes to go into my closet. It's like right over here. And she likes to lay on top of my shoes. I have like a shoe rack in there and she will like climb to the top of it and sit on top of them. And I used to try to stop her and be like, no, don't go in there. Like I, I will open the closet door and she will dart in there. And I used to try to stop her, but after a while I just started giving in because I'm like, whatever, it makes her happy. Is it that big of a deal? No. But I've created a monster now because she will sit outside of my closet door and she will like meow at me or like hit the door and like look at me like, okay, let me in. And the problem is that I do let her in. Like every time if she does that, I'm like, okay, sure. So now she wants to do it all the time. There'll be like, it'll be like a certain time every morning. She will be at the door looking at me like, okay, let me in. I wanna go take a nap in here. And I was on FaceTime with my friend the other day and I was like, oh, she always does this. And then I like opened the door to let her in and my friend was like, yeah, girl, it's because you always give in. Like you've just taught her. But I'm like, you know what? It's not that deep. It's not the biggest deal if she goes and sits in the closet, like who cares? I'll just keep the closet door open if it makes her happy. But I say all this to say, a minute ago, she was sitting at the door and I was waiting for her to start meowing at me, but she has decided to go nap on the bed. All right, we are moving on to the Fenty Shadow Sticks. So these are called, just Shadow Sticks, Shadow Sticks, but S-T-I-X, like their face sticks. So these retail for $25 and they come in two different finishes. We've got matte and we've got shimmer. Now I've used this shimmer one hmm, two times, three times now, either two or three times now. I, I don't have any qualms with it, but I can't say it's anything remarkable, but I wanna apply it today. So the shimmer shade I've been wearing is Sip and Sparkle, but I haven't tried the matte ones yet. So let's try this today. The matte one that we're gonna apply is in the shade Tara Miss You, which I think is a cute, funny little shade name. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and use the brush that um, Merit launched recently for their cream eyeshadows. I do like something a little bit more stiff like this for a cream shadow. Now, the thing about a shadow stick though is that you don't need a brush. Like you can blend it out with your finger. So why don't we do one eye with finger blending and one eye with a brush? So typically I like to use some sort of a base um, but I want to apply this directly to the skin without a primer or any other base just to see how it's going to wear. Also, the directions don't suggest that you need a base for this. So I would assume it's going to wear well on its own. This color is very um, almost like mustardy undertone, I would say. So the blend out on this, it's a little bit stiff, but still creamy enough. It's not like it's like fully set down where you can't blend it out but it's not as emollient as some other shadow sticks I've used in the past. But I'm just gonna take this. I mostly apply it, when I use a shadow stick, I like to mostly take it on like the mobile lid and then just blend up with whatever is left just to get a nice gradient fade out of it. So that's pretty. It's a little more like yellowy mustard than I would tend to like for an undertone but I don't mind it, you know? It sheared out a good amount, so I'm almost thinking, let's apply a little bit more and see if I can get a little more pigment to it. I don't mind that it sheared out though, because I find that that can make something a little bit easier to work with. Yeah, this is like so yellowy. I don't love this color on myself, but that is fully just a preference thing. Like you might think this shade is beautiful. I don't know that this is blending out so well, to be honest, I didn't notice any problems with the shimmer, but I do feel like shimmer and matte cream shadows tend to perform differently. So on this eye, let me go ahead and blend it out with my finger and see if maybe some of the warmth from my fingers can give us a little bit of a better blend out. Cause I do think this eye looks kind of patchy. Yeah, I'm actually liking the blend out a lot better with my finger. I felt like with the brush, it really sheared it out and kind of moved it around in a way that it resulted in a semi-patchy finish from the shadow. I feel like it's maintained a lot more pigment on the eye that I've blended out with my finger. So this formula might be best with your finger. I'm not loving that, but let's go in with the shimmer one on top. So you see, it's this really beautiful like foiled effect. I will say though, this formula right off the bat, the first time I tried the shimmer stick, I felt like it reminded me a lot of the hard candy eyeshadow sticks, which I really like. And those are $6 compared to $25 of this one. 
of this one what am i saying that's what that looks like i feel like once you go to blend it out even blending it out with my finger just now it really shears out almost kind of disappears so i feel like if you want a lot of that pigment you almost have to just swipe it on without really doing much blending okay there you go you see it looks fine i i'm not obsessed i don't think it's anything remarkable and based on the few times i've worn this nothing about it has stood out to me to recommend it over a lot of other shadow stick alternatives yeah i can't say it's a favorite but let's add some mascara this is my kelly ray mascara i'm not gonna apply a ton i kind of want to go in just with a little bit of a soft lash look today for the lips though after this i'm gonna go in with the jones road lip liners that i have been really liking and i was kind of hoping i wouldn't because you know i'm such a drugstore lip liner girly like i live for the nyx lip liners i always have one in my purse but i have really been liking the ones from jones road so we'll apply that and then i have the new um cream version of the lip colors from sigma so we'll do that on the lips also so this you saw me using in another video but i've got the shade nudist Let's go ahead and apply this. It's like the perfect combination of being stiff enough to apply and get a sharp lip line, but creamy enough that it's gliding over the lips without feeling dried out at all. I also find them to be like very long wearing with the times I've worn them. But now we're gonna go in with the Sigma Lip Cream in the shade Begonia. This is the lightest one of all of them. These remind me, look at this. This reminds me of like lip glosses from five years ago. These days, I feel like every lip gloss that launches is more of like your lip oil where it's a very sheared out formula. This is super like milky, creamy, high pigment, which used to really be my preference. I don't know if I'm as into this lip look, but I'm wondering if we're going to start seeing this type of lip product become pretty trendy again. Also, I love the chunky doe foot, but I know not everyone is into this. If you like a smaller doe foot, you might find this one to be a little bit big. Okay, here's the lip. It really reminds me of, you know when, okay, first we had liquid lipsticks and then there were like, what were they called? ColourPop had the like creamy version of a liquid lipstick that never like fully sat down. I can't think of what they called them, like lip velvet or something like that. That's what this is reminding me of. So preference is not my favorite for this type of lip product, but I do know people love this and like formula wise, the pigment is nice, it feels nice. And these are launching on the 19th, which I think is when you're seeing this video, if everything goes as planned. And I do have a Sigma affiliate code. It's just Kelly G if you want any money off on the website. The biggest standout today is probably this palette, but I'm gonna obviously keep testing it and let you know my thoughts. Biggest letdown, probably the shadow sticks. I will come back in a future video with some final thoughts, but I really hope you enjoyed my first impression on these products. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.